for another Ask Dr. Vaughn. I'll turn the phone around and be able to joining us and get started. Hillary, thanks for joining us. We're glad to have you be a part of Ask Dr. Vaughn. Mario, we're glad that you're here also. Good to see you. Namaste, Mon. Or is it Namaste, Mon? Man. Buttermilk1995, thank you. We're glad to have you here. Hi, Mano, Mario. Glad to have you. And I thought we'd take some time here. Now, if I uh, get a call, this will end suddenly, and I won't even know what happened. Empire City Ray, thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm sorry you're bored. I'm glad that you came here, though. We're going to have an interesting, stimulating discussion. Yes, we are. Hi. And Empire City Ray, good evening. So, uh, we have some time here if you guys have any questions. Kenny Urum, thank you for coming. Hey, good to see you. And nice girl, I believe that is. Thanks for joining us. We're glad to have you here, too. Hey, Mario. Howdy. Good to have you here. You guys have anything, uh, any particular burning questions that you wanted to ask today? If so, shoot. Uh, if not, we can talk about yeah, just whatever is going on. We had a busy day at work today. Some of you saw Dr. Gwen Vaughn over the lunch hour talking about his day and dropping uh, burrito droppings in the hallway. I, I got after him about that. Danielle, thank you for joining us. Matt, Addy, we're glad to have you here. Boy, a lot of our regulars. Good, 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 good to see you guys. We're glad to have that. And if you aren't a regular, if you've not been a part of Ask Dr. Vaughn, just swipe right to follow, and we'll get some questions going on, some good discussion here pretty soon. I see hearts already starting. We haven't even really gotten into any subjects, so that's really good. Okay, here we go, Empire City Way. Saw the last scope video, great comment about irregular PMS cycle. You said no TV in the bedroom once. Why? I said that, uh, Matt Addy, because we find that just the presence of the television in the bedroom correlates with worse sleeping patterns, probably because it's being used uh, at some point. We also have this thing that we find of needing regular sleep-wake cycles and regular sleep-wake locations. If you're doing something else in the location where you're supposed to sleep, it actually impairs with sleep when you're trying to sleep. So that could be uh, if it's a place where you play video games or watch television, and then you're trying to sleep in that same place, being in that place, there's something about it because of the activity you do there that makes sleeping more difficult. So that's why we say no television in the bedroom. And uh, at the same time, we say no sleeping on a couch in the living room. Uh, use that for television or reading or whatever. Uh, prefer doing procedures or figuring things out? Uh, I actually like both, but I think I prefer the procedures. I think I like working with the hands a little bit more. Uh, you thought it was a digestion thing. Nope, not a digestion thing. And I'm sorry that Mario's hands hurt. And thank you for those hearts there. That was pretty cool. Oh, that's a pretty color. In contrast to the uh, other colors on the screen with it. It kind of goes well with the bushes there. That's, that's kind of cool. Whoever's doing that, keep it up. That's, I like that. Well, I like all colors of hearts. I don't mean to discourage anybody else from doing hearts. Okay, uh, I'm sorry I missed uh, one of those things. Oh, about procedures versus figuring things out. I, I love it when I, I feel like I'm able to reach a definitive especially if it's a unique diagnosis, that's pretty cool, or if it's something that I just pull out of the back of my mind from way back in residency or even medical school. And amazingly, 19 years after getting out of medical school, it still happens that uh, I'll see something and I'll, I'll know what it was from all the way back in my training. It's really cool. Uh, there should be a female scope, like a male scope topic someday. We can do it now, Empire City Ray. Um, which would it be, female or male? You guys decide, and we can just go down that direction. I'll be glad to. Um, actually, for male issues, uh, we also have another periscope doctor. Um, what is his name? Do you guys know him? Oh, I'm embarrassed. I can't come up with his name. Jameen Brombot. Jameen Brombot. He does men's health specifically because he's a urologist. He's the one who did the uh, drive for men's health, drove the Tesla across the United States from Florida to L.A., uh, specifically promoting awareness of men's health issues. Ah, Empire City Ray remembers the uh, Medically Speaking Radio he was supposed to show up for. But we had a good time anyway. Uh, is it safe for stuffed animals to be near you when you sleep? As long as you don't suffocate in them, it's safe. Or uh, it could be a problem if they have fleas. That could be a problem too. Uh, another problem could be if uh, they have mites, which a lot of people are, are allergic to uh, dust mites and it's recommended that they wrap up their uh, mattresses and pillows in plastic covers. Uh, it's, it's one of the reasons that a lot of people aren't compliant with the recommendations of allergists because they'll tell a lot of people to do that and they don't like sleeping on plastic. Um, I guess because the allergy symptoms aren't as bad as sleeping on plastic. Build a bear, a workshop bear. 
Well, as long as the Build-A-Bear workshop didn't get shut down for any health code violations, and as long as you're not turning over and just planting your face in it and trying to breathe through it, it should be okay. Oh, that sounds bad. Is Legionnaire's disease contagious? Yes, it is. It's uh, contagious through airborne um, bacteria. Why do doctors tell one not to clean one's ears? Uh, the reason I do is because ears do a pretty good job of cleaning. You're talking about just the uh, the canal, not the outside ear, but the canal, uh, because they naturally usually do a good job themselves of cleaning themselves out. The wax naturally flows. There's a flow to it. There's little cilia, which are little hair-like structures on the cells lining the canal, and they move the wax along from inside to outside. We get problems when people do anything to disrupt that, like sticking a Q-tip in, and then it packs the wax in. Uh, Q-tips are especially poor at cleaning ears, especially inside the canal, because the uh, diameter of the Q-tip is not that much smaller than the diameter of the ear. So you'll get a little bit of wax, but you, you are not getting half of the diameter of the wax, at least because there's no way to get to it with a Q-tip. You're going to be pushing it in. The, the uh, innermost uh, diameter of the ear canal, that, that wax gets packed in. And then when I look in ears, I can tell who's used Q-tips because you get this nice uh, concave, uh, rounded um, wax uh, plug that, that has these edges that come up uh, from the middle, rounded toward the... Uh, outside of the ear along the uh, canal wall and you can see that's the shape that's left from sticking a q-tip in there well a need <laughs> knitting needle sounds like something my dad did with a key once is it safe to eat pickles uh safer to eat them than, than to stick them in your ear yes um, now pickles are very acidic and full of sodium so that you can have some problems some people can really get hurt by them Q-tip information is wild. Even more that you docs can tell them can tell when we use them. Yes, we can. We can tell sometimes when people use uh, bobby pins too, because we have to repair the ruptured tympanic membrane or eardrum that it can leave behind. Yeah, ears are interesting. Uh, I've had some fun with ears over the years, um, ear canals and things that go on it. He only eats half the pickle. I guess that means you get half the sodium and half the uh, acidity from the vinegar. Um, I have actually made out a, a little yelp sound once when looking in the ear when I, I looked in and went, did not expect to have the, uh, the cockroach looking back at me. That was an interesting one. What was your major in undergrad? Uh, I had two majors. First, uh, broadcasting for a year and then uh, just general biology um, and got a, a BA in general biology at Northwest Nazarene College, now called Northwest Nazarene University because all of these small Colleges now call themselves universities. It's just, I guess it's the cool thing to do now. Uh, hence, medically speaking. Oh, should we talk about pickles on medically speaking? Is that what you're hinting at? Or, or that we should talk about ears on medically speaking radio? Uh, I don't repair eardrums. No, I let them heal. And, and actually, most uh, eardrums do heal on their own. It would be an ear, nose, and throat doctor who would do any repair on them. Uh, okay, so about things in the ear. No, I didn't get a degree in broadcast. I just did it for a year. But I did a lot of it. Did quite a bit. Uh, yeah, just a year. Yeah, just a year. Um, yeah, the, the bugs in the ears. I've seen a cockroach or two. have seen an earwig. And uh, all the t every one of the people, they were sleeping on a floor. I cannot say anything about their sobriety but I suspect that most of them had some kind of substance on board when they were, oh, see you, Mario, when they were on the road. California Sherry, thanks for joining us. We're glad to have you be a part of things and, and to give us hearts, it looks like. Um, okay, so it's interesting how we treat the bugs in the ear. I'll go ahead and tell you guys that. We, uh, what you want to do is stop the movement because a bug scratching up against the eardrum is one of the most painful things I can imagine going through. Yes, hello, Sherry. And Shelly, Sherry, tell me where you are in California. So, the bug goes in head first, they crawl in, and they can't turn around. So all they do, oh, you're in Concord, not too far away. Um, you know, just a little bit more than an hour. We're in Auburn here. So they're scratching at the eardrum because they can't do anything else and they want out. So uh, there's a couple things you want to accomplish. One, you want to stop the movement as fast as possible. 
And if you could do that and at the very same time be taking a, a, a measure that actually numbs up the lining of the canal, that would be a really good thing. So we use something called viscous lidocaine, lidocaine being an anesthetic that we use to inject uh, whenever we're doing a procedure in skin. Well, you can get that in a, a viscous, meaning somewhat thick and liquid form, and you can just squirt that in with a syringe into the ear canal. And that's going to do two things. One, it's going to numb up all of your sensory nerves inside of the, the uh, ear canal so you don't hurt anymore. And it's also going to plug up the respiratory system of the bug in there, so effectively killing the bug by uh, drowning it. Then at that point, you can just grab it and pull it out with some uh, alligator forceps or some really narrow forceps. And uh, I, I agree with you guys. The, the ear stuff, the bugs in the ear are pretty interesting. I think... For me, uh, my work more interesting than thyroid issues. So uh, some symptoms of thyroid issues. Uh, low thyroid, oh, if it breaks, then we just irrigate it out with water. Low thyroid uh, leads to decreased metabolism rate. And so you're going to have to um, notice possibly lower body temperature, possibly lower energy level. The skin will change and hair will change. Hair becomes more coarse, thicker hairs. Uh, skin uh, becomes kind of thickened and with low enough thyroid you, you get actual um, decreased mental function. So people who are in parts of the country where uh, they have low iodine, you'd have this common thing of uh, people growing up with uh, inadequate thyroid function and they had the term for them Cretanism, which really makes me wonder about people from the island Crete. Or maybe you've heard somebody called a Cretan. They're referring to a person of low intelligence. Uh, but specific Cretanism is when it's from very low thyroid function. And so replacing the thyroid will help. But if they've been that way uh, since growing up, you're not going to fix what's already been done. And then hyperthyroidism is the opposite. You'll have thin individual hairs, thinner skin, uh, more energy, possibly weight loss with it, possibly problems tolerating heat. But you can also have fatigue from it too because it's burning all of your ATP uh, just to generate heat instead of actually using it for energy. Empire City Ray says it was a good question. And he knows because he watches. Ask Dr. Vaughn. Hazaniah or Hazaniah, we are glad that you joined us. Thank you for joining us. If you want to uh, follow Ask Dr. Vaughn, those of you who are new, swipe right and follow. Or if you share with your friends, swipe right and share with friends who are interested in medical topics. This is what we do when we do Ask Dr. Vaughn. So how would you test for the thyroid problem, Addy? There's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, first of all, you, you, you want to do a, a physical examination and check things like reflexes, see if they're hyperreflexic like you expect with hyperthyroidism or hyporeflexic, meaning they don't have as much of a reflex with hypothyroidism. Look at their hair, look at their skin. Actually put fingers on the thyroid gland, have the patient swallow. It brings the thyroid gland up from the chest cavity into the neck so you can feel it there. And then blood tests would be for uh, actually the, the best test is not even the thyroid hormone. It's for the hormone that goes from the hypothalamus uh, through the pituitary gland into the thyroid gland through the blood called thyroid stimulating hormone. And if that's really high, it tells you the brain is not seeing enough thyroid hormone. So it indicates low thyroid function. If it's really low, it indicates the brain is um, getting too much thyroid activity and you have a hyperthyroid situation. And then we also can catch things by checking uh, one of the forms of thyroid hormone called T4, T4 meaning there's four iodine molecules on it, uh, as opposed to T3, the active form of the molecule only has three. Why don't they use lidocaine for ear infection pain? Uh, we do use a form of it, uh, not lidocaine itself, because used improperly it can cause seizures. We use something called Auralgan, A-U-R-A-L, GAN, I believe, Aralgan. You may not be able to find it under that name, and I think it's actually benzocaine instead of lidocaine. And the drops are given to uh, people who have ear infections with pain. And in fact, that is a much better treatment than antibiotics because antibiotics don't make a difference in almost every ear infection that comes in the door. Uh, generally, what we'll do now in an effort to try to cut back on the inappropriate use of uh, antibiotics for ear infections is maybe write prescription and say, 
if you're not feeling better in a day or two, fill this prescription, or if if it's worsening or the fever is not going down, but try to get by without it and use pain medicine or just Tylenol for the pain instead of drops. But Aralgan is the ear drop that we use for that, and I use that um, for ear infections when I see them, although we don't see that many ear infections now because of the vaccines uh, against Streptococcus pneumoniae and Haemophilus influenza, the, uh, the actual bacteria that caused most of the um, ear infections that kids used to have. It's kind of a cool age to live in kind of driving the pediatricians out of a job. Those hearts are beautiful, by the way. Side effects of clonopin, addiction, becoming a stoner and living on the streets. And Empire City really likes the race stuff. Matt Addy likes sleepiness stuff. Uh, yeah, sleepiness. Um, and it can be used without a problem, too. I don't mean to imply that uh, everybody who uses it is going to have a problem with it. It's just so many people do have such a hard time getting off of it. It, it creates this dependence on it. You miss it when it's gone. Your body wants it uh, when it wears off. Uh, the rumor is that Stevie Nicks, um, of course, you have to be my generation or older who know who that is, uh, called Klonopin the worst drug I could ever be on compared to uh, other street drugs she had used. Although clonopin is not the worst in its class of benzodiazepines, um, the fast-acting, short-duration ones like Xanax, uh, the brand, the, the, that's the brand name, the generic name is Alprazolam. Boy, that one, people really need it. And in fact, can get severe withdrawal rather quickly when it wears off with the shakes and the seizures um, and, and can actually lead to death. Same withdrawal syndrome as alcohol or ethanol. That's why you can use them for each other. Uh, if somebody is withdrawing from Xanax, they can use alcohol or they can use Valium or Librium for withdrawal from uh, ethanol, which sometimes is actually used, uh, Librium specifically, rather than Valium or Ativan, although they can be used too, to help a person to taper down from a certain dose to help get off of alcohol, usually done in, in a hospital. Anything to help with SSRI withdrawals? My favorite thing for SSRI withdrawals is to switch to an SRI, SSRI that doesn't cause withdrawal. So I'll take people from uh, Paxil and put them on Prozac, and then you can taper them off of that very easily. Hydrocodone, awful. I'm sorry you got addicted to it. Um, and hydrocodone, the withdrawal syndrome, is the same as from opium, um, methadone, heroin, and not deadly, just miserable. Addy, you are you are getting the thumbs up here from other people. You must be so awesome at formulating questions for Ask Dr. Vaughn. I don't know if it's time to go. Oh, yep, it is time to go. Okay, so I have had a blast with you guys. Look forward to the next time we do it. Make sure you share with your friends and give lots of hearts. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter, too, if you're interested in something other than Periscope. And know that we do Medically Speaking Radio every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. at medicallyspeakingradio.com. That's Pacific time. And we will see you next time. Until then. Stay in good health.